Sonny, would you keep your hands off the set? Well, Tom, it's going to start well, in two look, minutes. I know how to and run this thing, you okay? Do. Hush, I'm nervous enough. Oh, this yeah. is some time for the picture to go on the blink. Oh, wait, wait. Here we go. Hey. 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 No applause, please. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, it's going to be on any minute, Steve. Okay. Too. Hey, how do you feel? Nervous. Oh, come on, Joe. What if something goes wrong? Well, nothing oh. can go wrong. We paid for the airtime. They got to run it. I'm still nervous. <laughs> what time is it? It's about <laughs> 10 seconds later than when Stu was. <laughs> You know, I can't believe tomorrow this time it, it, the campaign will be all over. We'll, we'll either be celebrating or relieved that it's all over. Ah, you take it from me, honey. We're going to be celebrating. I'm still two points behind Ted Adams so in the what? polls. Well, you were 20 points behind when you started. 22. Right, 22. And this is what's going to put you over the edge, Joe. I just know it. What time is it? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Critical message paid oh, for by the committee to elect Joanne Vincent. We all like to listen to stories, don't we? Tall stories or short stories, epics, histories, adventures. Well, the story we're about to hear isn't exactly any one of those, and yet it is a bit of each. First and foremost, though, it's a romance. It's the story of a girl from Henderson, of her life, her love, her triumphs and disappointments, of what her hometown means to her and what she means to it. It's a story of Joanne Gardner, born, raised, educated in Henderson. Joe went to Wilson Grammar School, Henderson High, and finally to Henderson College for two years. But romance intervened, and she became a wife and mother. Stu Bergman, one of Joanne's oldest friends in Henderson, remembers Joe in those days. It's funny, you know. I can't even remember the first day we met. Did I go next door to borrow an egg, or did Joe just drop by to say hi as a new neighbor? All I know is that when Marge and I met Joe, it was like she'd always been our oldest and dearest friend. This was about the time that she was opening the old Moda Haven. You wouldn't believe the work that went into that place. And by today's standards, it wasn't all that much, I guess, but it meant a lot to Joe. It did indeed. It was the beginning of Joe's career as a successful businesswoman. After her husband's untimely death, it was work and the love of her family, her friends, and her neighbors that sustained her. Then, as now, she drew strength from the land around Henderson, the water, the trees. When her daughter grew up, Joe became part of the staff of Henderson Hospital, taking a full-time job as librarian. Dr. Bob Rogers, chief administrator of Henderson Hospital, recalls Joanne's contribution. Hey, is this what you're paying for, Travis? I'm learning a lot about Joe Vincent. Doctors we're gonna like research this town problems used to come listen. up to me and ask where I'd ever found someone so able and efficient. Right here in Henderson, I'd tell them. And Henderson was very grateful to Joe when she and Dr. Tony Vincent founded a community center for underprivileged kids. Joe and Tony were devoted to that place, and their efforts paid off when in 1973 he was given a federal grant. Today, the rec house is still flourishing and has become a model for community centers throughout the state. going to go on. Shh, I think Daddy's part's coming up next. Her marriage to Dr. Tony Vincent, then chief of surgery at Henderson Hospital, made her more a part of the medical community, active in fundraising and social service. It was during that period that Joe and her husband adopted a young patient of Tony's who had been orphaned. She's talking about Bruce. I'm John Wyatt. Tony Vincent was a friend of mine. I was married to Joe's sister, Eunice. We were a close-knit family. It wasn't always roses, we had our ups and downs. <laughs> but we were held together by Joe's warmth and affection and helpfulness. She spread it around us like a cloak. It was about that time that she was appointed personnel director of Henderson Hospital. But then the loss of Tony Vincent threatened to shatter Joe's ability to come back from adversity once and for all, until an old friend came to the rescue. 
It was up to her friends to show her that no matter how badly you've been hurt, there are things that have to be done and people who need you. And that's when Joe and I got together and found that old place out on the post road, a rundown old house that we turned into the Hartford House Inn. They say we've got good food and nice rooms, but what we've really got is the loveliest hostess and best manager anywhere. When her friends asked Joe Vincent to run for Henderson City Council, her reply was, what do I know about politics? The answer was, maybe not being a politician is the best thing you've got going. That and the reputation for courage, integrity, and decency. A sense of caring for what's made Henderson a place we're glad we live in. Hey, Susie, I think you're coming up. Yeah, I care. Oh, there I, I am. Susie Wyatt. I go to school here in Henderson. My Aunt Jo's running for city council. She thinks schools are very important. Oh, there's that picture again. She also thinks Henderson ought to have the best teachers. All my friends would like to vote for her, but they can't, because they're too young to vote. <laughs> I know if I was a grown-up, I'd vote for Aunt Jo. She's the best person in the whole world. Susie can't vote for her Aunt Jo. But you can. If Henderson is more than a place where you live and work, if you're tired of the old politics of exploitation and grabbing for a fast buck at any cost to the values it took decades to build, then maybe you'll agree. This time, it's going to be Joe and Vincent for Henderson City Council. All right. Joe, that was great. Oh, Sonny, I've got to hand it to you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how it could have turned out any better. I really don't. Right. Joe, if that doesn't do it, nothing will. Mm.